Okay, at the end of the last video, I was just erasing the white from around the tail that I wanted to use. And I was being pretty aggressive with the feather. But I noticed that each time you use the feather on a new layer, it seems to grow on its own by its number of pixels. So you can always reset that. <laughs> because I feathered it so much, or I did something, that I might lose more than what I want. And all I want to do is erase this from it. So what I'm going to do is take that feather down to just about four pixels. Now I'm going to use my lasso tool. And again, I want a lot of that overlap. But I don't want this extra tail hanging out. Also because the lighting of that tail is off and kind of tricky and bright. So now with a four pixel feather, I'm going to delete it. And that shouldn't bite in as much onto the rest. And then for my other layer, the legs, I've got a pretty crisp edge there. So I'm going to use that lasso. I'm going to follow that and then I'm going to be generous with spacing with a four pixel feather and delete that out. Okay, so far so good. Now I want to see if there's any other features I really wanted front paws and forearms. So here we go. Often it's good to use legs and joints, especially connecting to pelvises and collarbones from one reference, but it, it can be very helpful to, to change their, um, their feet and just make a composite at that phase. So that's why I have this one for the front paw and forearms. But I think instead of for their front paws, I'm going to use this for the... Oh, that's tough, because I like that, that back foot. But I think I'll use it for the back paws, so that I have both legs. All right. So I'm going to grow it, put it on top of these things, just so I can see it. Take it down to 50% opacity. And then use Control-T match its scale, maybe its angle a little bit. I want these feet, these red panda feet. So it's a combination of a red panda, a giraffe, a house cat, and different squirrels, and a chipmunk. Definitely five sources there. For an original creation. Now I'm going to take its opacity back to 100% and I'm just going to lasso around those feet. Lots of overlap. And then Command J to duplicate it and get rid of the smart object. Okay, now I need to separate the feet out so I can use them independently. So roughly lasso around and then duplicate. Internally composite. I have to be on the right layer. All right, so I've got that one alone. And once I've got that one alone, then I can position it into place. And maybe Control T. Always good to customize it. Make it match with the anatomy. A way that's a little bit more believable. And then I'll work on the coloring and stuff, but let's do the, the other leg first. So I'm going to isolate it. Or I could, eh, we'll see. Now let's isolate it and see what I can do with it. It's at a slightly weird angle, but that's kind of how these feet work when they're at being pushed up against something. So I'm going to duplicate that on its own. 
then take that layer, control T, and get this foot to work for the silhouette. So I'm going to try distorting it, a way of kind of shifting its angle a little. There we go. Be widening it, widening, ah, widening it at the top. Yeah, that works. Kind of sitting it down. Now I got to push it into the anatomy, pretending that that log isn't there. Okay, so this is the trickier one. So first I'm going to use my lasso with a four pixel feather. It's going to rough cut around the fur and then a little bit tighter around the toes, even though these are a little blurry in the photo reference, probably because they were moving a little bit more than a depth of field issue. This more, looks more like a motion blur. Okay, now I'm going to use that 100% soft eraser, maybe a little bit smaller because we're getting a little nitpicky here. Got to make sure I'm on the right layer. That matters. Get rid of those hard edges. Okay, and then, with as much overlap as possible, I go down to around less than 40%. You can see I'm just repeating myself a lot and blending it in with what's already there. I want it to feel like part of this haunch in the background. All right, its toes are too bright right now, but otherwise I think that's working. And I might even cut off this toe, like pretend it's coming from the other side. But I might just warp it ever so slightly to push this back edge. There we go. If you warp it too much, it starts to look really macaroni, like cooked macaroni-ish. Soft. And then before I cut it out more, I want to see what this front paw is going to look like. So same thing, lasso, really rough. Get a little bit tighter around these toes. I like these three toes with the slight claw. Something different. Okay, now I want to use that 100% soft edged Eraser. Get rid of that hard edge. And then go to a lower opacity, around less than 40. Start blending it in. I haven't done color balance or levels. All of those are going to help. I'll get to there. Now, I know the shape I want them. So I can erase from that feet layer without having to try to cut out those soft edged feet. I can now just erase a lot from that layer. Oh, got to be careful not to erase the front legs though. So I still want some overlap if necessary, but I'm going to erase all of this. Okay, so I'm starting to cut out my creature because we're going to get it turned in here pretty soon. And now 
I'm just going to use that four pixel feather. And because I got to turn something in and I want it to be pretty good, if not as good as I can make it with some extra effort and time. I'm going to cut out these hands. They could use some dodging and burning. You know, some are catching a lot more light. But this is all stuff that we will address in our proving ground when we put our creature into an environment. These are all some of the different challenges. Use that feather and kind of bite away at it a little bit. Yes, there's things that need to be cleaned up, but I'll get there. Now let's get it around here. That four fixed pixel feather will keep it fairly soft. Between these legs. I'm going to undo that because I lost a little more than I wanted to. So option. Subtract that bunch from it and then delete and then yes the tail has stuff i still need to get rid of there's a little thing here so there's the chameleon do i even need the chameleon anymore no not really so now it's just about clone stamping it so what do I do? I turn off the background. I turn off my sketch. So I just have my cutout creature in all its different layers. But the trick is, I'm going to unlock the head. Now I want to make a new layer on top of everything. And this is like giving the car a fresh coat of paint after it's been built. You're going to treat it all as one thing. And I'm going to hold down Option not option, sorry, I'm going to right click and give it a color. I'm going to make that color red and I'm going to name this layer clone stamp. This is my overall clone stamping. And this is where we can fix some issues. So I'm going to use this clone stamp tool to remind you we want it soft, we want it large, and we want it at 100% opacity to start with. And then then we want it to sample pressure sensitive to size all layers all layers that are visible and then we target where we want to steal from and hold down option and click and then it will move that and paint that wherever we click and this is not destroying the pixels underneath because It is all on its own layer. So I'm covering up that ear. If I want to extend this pattern a little bit, I can actually steal from where that pattern comes from and paint it in because it's stealing from all layers. So quite powerful, very helpful tool in what we're doing. Like, what about here? What if I want this to be less bright white? Well, I can extend with my soft-edged clone stamp and push into it like that. What if I want it to be kind of dirtier? Well, I can take the opacity down since the soft edges are there and then steal from these dirtier white <laughs> parts of the squirrel, right? And I can map it on top. And what's so great about it being on its own layer like this, just like paint on a car can be modified, you're not going to be hurting the car to strip the paint.